hero as well, I think, plays in very well to what you're against, because if Felt are trying to be quick about this in a mid-game teamfight way, uh, Dawn is one of the strongest carries in that time of the game. So I like it. All right, let's see if we can get our predictions right this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Player with the most last hits at seven, I'm going to say Yawar. All right, as like Quinn. Total number of blink daggers purchased by 25 minutes. Zero it's gonna to be two. one. At least there's only gonna be one in this game. I feel like who's so gonna have one? Maybe an Enigma, maybe Pango, right? Yeah, at the most. It. Yeah, so two. Most observer words by game, and we're gonna go with Sonic since we sure. assume that they are gonna win this. And then last player to be killed. Last wait. What? This is, that one is so. That's this so means dumb. the last player. Okay, I I don't think this is the last kill of the game. This is the last player that gets killed the first time. Oh well, what if nobody? What if somebody goes the, deathless? Then you're correct if you predict that player, I think. Okay, so who goes deathless this game? Hmm. Well, last time it was Solji. If he goes deathless, I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say you are. I, I have no idea on this one, though. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's also a really good Lena game. I could see I'm going to go Quinn, actually. I think he might be deathless here. They have no... Like, so what felt have is this timing of playing mid-game oriented, right? But they don't have very good backline catch against Lena. They're, it's hard for them to get to Quinn, actually, with these heroes. There's no oh, jumping mid-hero. You are missing one very important factor. Yawar can't take his aggression out on Cabinet, so he has to take it out on the other team, mm -hmm. thus having a, a very strong game. game well, he two. might also take out his aggression on the enemy team and therefore put himself in harm's way and die. No, the holes are... Okay. You didn't see the holes in the Cabinet. They were very clean, uh, okay. almost calculated with the amount of pressure that he <laughs> placed on them. Oh. Dude, imagine that. Imagine you're raging in a game, and then you're like selectively looking where you're gonna hit your wall. You have like that <laughs> amount of self-control. I feel like when people rage, they just smack at something, but you're like literally, okay, where can I do the most damage yeah, to my cabinet? <laughs> just really hates that really cabinet. Something. What can I say? <laughs> see MSS. Oh, we're gonna see the the bramble, bramble come out. It's gonna be pretty annoying for. Oh, they're actually gonna trap him in with the shards as well. That's not gonna lead to a kill, but a lot of damage done. And Shu oh, takes wow. the brunt of it at 75 HP now. Even requires try versus a TP. Try here. This is quite the commitment porting up Hoodwink this early. Now you're effectively locking yourself to a 1v1 Pango against Enigma. Pango loves this lane. He can kill the Eidolons. Yeah. It's, I think, already advantage uh, Sonic's based on the laning setup. Their tri lane's also freaking amazing. It's Tusk, Willow, Dawn. You're going to fight yeah. this 3 on 3? This is a crazy trial. It's really, really strong. I think Once, a Baton uh, can barely make mistakes here if they're gonna. Oh, speaking no. of which, that yeah. is not the case. So, Chu yeah. looks to be getting first blooded, and Fata will. So now a kill on Fata. I mean, that could be worth something now, Cinder. And last game, it was worthless. <laughs> this game, he is the most farmed here on the map. I wonder what he's gonna buy. I think he should buy Bassy here. I think whenever you're playing 3 vs 3, obviously the aura items start having added value, right? Uh, and Bass is just amazing for their lane. Dawn wants to spend mana, Tusk wants to spend mana a lot. They just want to poke like this, what they're doing right now into UGD. Yep. The Bramble's going to catch him. A couple more right clicks will do it. He pops the Fairy Fire. Looks like he'll live. Fairy but again, damage is done. Just to live and still be low. And they have no salve in the lane. Literally only Tangos, so... It's going to take a while to get him afloat again. Oh, this is rough. And to top it all off, the big camp is not blocked. So if Sonics push the wave and then they go and pull the hard camp, you have effectively two choices as felt. One is you come and contest the hard camp, at which point you're forcing a fight out side of the lane, which is really dangerous for your lineup. Or you pull small camp and take the loss. Or this. This is actually the third option, which is the best one that they've got. Just because the waves weren't as pushed in as they could have been, is that Shu goes and interrupts the pull. If this wave would have been in tower, um, when Fata went to pull, they would have got the pull off. And that's... that's tough. Now, Lesla on the bot lane doing just dandy, killing some Eidolons. 17, 17 and 2 versus the 11 and 5 on Fade. And then mid lane as well for... Sonics Quinn sitting at 14 and 4 versus the 9 and 1 from Solji's Lesh. So mid and bottom seem to be favored for Sonics and top lane we've already talked about because of that first blood. Uh, they seem to be winning all three lanes again. I don't know how drastic you would put this compared to game number one, but 
He's certainly leading. Yeah, another ice shard shoot. Especially considering it's a try versus try scenario, right? These games have the potential to be very explosive. If you're running two solo lanes that are doing well and then you win the try lane, look at it from the perspective of Felt. What playmaking do they have if they lose this lane? They have a low level of Baden and a low level Hoodwink because they were forced into a try lane and nobody of their, none of their cores is a catch. So finding moves is going to be really difficult. And then you look at the other side, you look to Sonics. They have a Pango who's going to be high level and can definitely set up fights. They have, you know, the Donalty. They have Tusk. Just naturally their supports are more aggressive. So definitely concerning. I love, by the way, the adaptation that Fade made in the bottom lane. I think this is really clever. You know, you buy the Buckler uh, to give your Eidolons more armor against the Pango. But despite this, they're still getting killed. Like, this is a big lead now for Leslau in terms of last hits. The gold may be even, but, you know, you're playing solo lane Enigma and you're effectively drawing. This hero is meant to win in mm -hmm. 1v1s almost always, right? So, he might be here. Now here. has the tag team in the top lane. Fade, That's and with that Curse Crown, is going to ensure the second kill of the game in this top lane for Sonic. Keep, keep half an eye on Fade right now. Leslau now has the mana for both spells. He needed 170. Uh, Fade is playing on half health, so if both those spells land with Orb of Corrosion, mm. it is pretty damn close to a kill. And Fade has to be careful now. I'm just getting denied out of the lane. Look at that. Okay, so even though you have Buckler, because of Orb of Corrosion, he still one shots the Eidolons with level 3 Swash. Maybe level three Eidolons can survive. They get 20 more health. It's oh, MSS, thing. he might be dead. Yep, Lucent Beam Something. takes him out. So taking advantage of Fata not being in the lane at that time. Yep. Looks like he was getting down a, uh, that's not his sentry actually. I'm not sure what he was doing over here. We're gonna pull again, but it's gonna be disrupted again. Yep. So nice little comeback here for Felt, if you want to call it that. MSS is gonna TP up here with a south for your war. They're not going to use it. They just want the salve. He's just going to get tangos instead. So obviously, the half value salve feels pretty bad. Yeah. You don't see that all too often as Lucent Beam continue to harass you. War is the one that has to be careful. It has six charges on his stick, though. Quinn is crushing mid. I just realized how one sided this was compared to the previous game. So, the Quap versus and Warfare last game was pretty much a draw. This time around, Quinn and Lena versus Left Man. Left matchup seems to be on a totally different level. Oh, He's Paradise. He's going to take the full Starbreaker. No, he actually dodges the third proc. But a couple oh, more right clicks. Shield. The Fodic Shield saves him for the time being. Along with the Mist Coil. So that means Fata might be in trouble now. They're going to turn their sights onto him. First Crown applied, but the heals continue to come out from Shu. So Felt, again, getting a nice exchange here in the top lane. And they're going to try to continue on as you are. Pretty low. Gets off the hammer. As you can see, the Dark Willow already died. Yawar finds one, but then dies shortly after. But on the other side, Lesla gets the solo kill onto the Enigma. Oh, good time. The turn around here in Paradise. <laughs> they actually kill everybody. Everybody dies in this lane. Mata TP'd in to help secure just another, uh, another kill there for Sonics, but a whole lot of back and forth in this top lane. The biggest kill, however, was not on camera. Pango soloed Enigma. So, Leslau now with a 900 almost net worth advantage in the safe lane over a solo lane Enigma. I don't know the last time I've seen an Enigma lose a lane this badly 1v1. This is bad news. And keep in mind, Fade's last game on DP wasn't exactly impressive either. So, as far as like your mentality, you know, of, of staying strong as a player, when you're getting this crushed both games, is kind of demoralizing, I think. Gotta what focus on. What the hell is going on here? Yawar is in the enemy jungle. He's gonna get spotted now. Hammer to can he go to it though? No! Did not I find the distance. Oh my god, he died for the neutral. Are you serious? That was gonna be such a bad death for him. Now it doesn't matter that much in Paradise. They're gonna try to take advantage of the fact that he was left to his own devices, but they won't find the kill. More heals coming out from Shu. Doing a good job. That hurt. Yeah, why was trying to pull the wave, right? Yeah. Did he have any other well, he got, to be over there? He got stuck on the other side of the tower on the tier one, on the right side. And then it was just chased. And okay. then, yeah, he was pulling that wave just to try to be cheeky. 
popping out. He doesn't. His TP just came off cooldown, so already halfway walking there. So his game is actually not great right now. It started nope. off pretty well. Definitely not. But this is the kind of game where the carry can definitely get carried when you look at how the other two lanes are going. So that's the good yeah. news. Quinn is a thousand net worth ahead of Soljin mid, and Leslau is almost a thousand ahead of the Enigma. So the other two lanes are just insane wins for Sonics. And they're going to take advantage of that the rotation. Oh, Soldier does get spotted by, or rather, MSS gets spotted by Soldier here. Pretty important. They're going to turn this into a bait play. Yeah, TP's coming in. Swatch is there. Faith is just dead, though. Yeah, and they will get the fine. turnaround kill onto MSS, so despite having more information, Felt lose out on that exchange. Yeah, I think the problem there is Solji's positioning. He gets hit by the snowball because he's standing in front of the tusk. So that initial stun from the roll was where he was meant to offer protection for the Enigma to turn that into a, a turnaround play. But obviously getting hit by the stun, unable to, and just turns into another Sonic's win. I'll try to make a move mid here. Falter will see it though. Yep, Pulse Nova is there. Instant dispel on the Curse Crown. And you can see Shu, the value that this hero has already in this game. He's actually been doing a really nice job. Yep. And despite Felt being down 2k now, as Paradise in the jungle now with his Moon Glaives, getting that mask. Our Morbid Mask right now, close to getting Mask of Madness. As Bata, he's gonna get stunned, gets off the Shadow Realm, but that is a lot of damage that goes right through it. Pulse Nova, and now the right clicks to follow. Easy kill for Felt. But, again, this, these smoke ganks, I feel like they always lead to a kill onto Fata, which he's gonna be fine with. Oh, uh, yeah, War could be in trouble this time, though. Yeah, he's not quite six yet. Gets off the Hammer, Instant Lucent Beam. And Yawar's game is looking worse and worse and worse. But like you said, uh, the other two cores for Sonics are doing extremely well, and we'll see if they're able to use that to continue to build on this lead. Yeah, Quinn obviously has not made a single rotation versus the two or three now of the Lesh, but look at the bank account that's the trade-off that you take 47 cs on lash to the 79 of lena currently in that mid lane just getting way way bigger just gonna you know go try and a full TV. level pretty standard yeah full level advantage as well the problem is lash kind of you know we were criticizing soldier last game for not making enough moves on the invoker i think this game he has to do this on lash that's the problem if he doesn't do this the other ones are just going too poorly and as a result now he's losing his mid tier one to a solo pushing lena yeah, and the snowball coming in. Solji basically out of mana. That's going to set up the LSA. Oh, not even needed. Just the Laguna Blade. And down goes Solji again. Terrorizes corpse. I'll say again, that was his first death of the game. But they get the tier one tower. First death of the series. <laughs> That's true. First Didn't even die in the last game. Dies again. <laughs> That's the literal his most brain wrong brain thing I could have said, actually. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, moving on. I don't know why it felt like he's died so much, but he's having himself a bit of a rough start against Quinn. Well, maybe you're looking at the net worth and you're like, this Lesh has definitely died, but no, <laughs> yeah. it is literally just the laning advantage coming out. As we have a bit of a grouping here in the bot lane from Felt. And this is a probably difficult want to take this tier push, one. though. Pango 10 seconds away from rolling Thunder. And thoughts on the defense with level four brambles. I, I think this just is not going to happen. But we'll see. They will go up first. This is only a level two edict, mind you. So the second edict, edict won't even be enough to kind of kill off the eidolons for fun here. Nice little swashbuckle. Um, yeah. yeah this top like lane though, Paradise. To he's getting gone on while this is all happening. Offset that mask of madness just for the extra speed. Hammers online in three seconds as Quinn continuing on. Looks like the hammer's gonna come out. Paradise. Looks like he's just gonna die to the right click of Yuar. And Yuar really, really needed that one. That's Solji and company now. See the sharpshooter coming out, but she was actually gonna pop that ult. But here comes MSS from the sideline. They lose Fata, but they're gonna get everybody else in turn. And Shu just trying to stay alive as long as possible, but not long enough. As a swashbuckle comes from Leslau again. As UGD, this might be a full team wipe. Shield crashes there. Watch buckle to follow, and that is a full 
team wipe at yeah. 13 minutes for Sonic. That bottom push that just not feel possible with the resources they brought. It's a level two edict and they're pushing into Pango plus Willow that are just set up nicely. I think if you, it's tough because you feel like you have to open this tower, but I don't think you could have done it with those resources. You needed to bring more to make that happen. And a huge win for Sonics. They get five kills. As you said, they even get bot tower. Sure, it'll be denied, but now all tier ones are open. This is a way more one-sided game than the first one, actually. Uh, looking at things right now, this could very easily get out of hand. he finds Fade. That's Malefice supply, but Fade is just taking casual right clicks from Quinn. Finally gets stunned, but the Bramble is there to hold him in place, and the Enigma dies again. Quinn, very little mana to speak of, so we'll likely have to back out. And we'll go back to base. He has boots to travel. And only about a thousand away from finishing BKB. Meanwhile, on the other side for Solji, Arcane Boots, Kaya. And the dangerous Just to show thing, the difference. Yeah, when you go for a build like this, unless you have no health, right? So you're very susceptible to getting burst by Tusklina plus Pango or a Donald combination. You are fully reliant on your Abaddon if you build like this. And... I think it might be necessary for them to take this route, for him to stay relevant, but it also means that situations like this can happen, and... He did. He I died guess if again. You had, if you I had more, say now. <laughs> if you had more tanky items, you'd probably still die to that 3v1, to be honest, but... It's just less freedom in other situations in the game where you might be able to stay alive and get saved by a bat, and now you're really reliant on him being literally next to you. And guess what? Shu was covering Paradise instead, because he kind of has to hedge his bets with where he thinks the gank is going to come. And he obviously chooses to protect Oh my god, what a block. Just, Paradise oh. is dead. Unbelievable. MSS with the long range ice shards. And now they're going to get a full stack of ancients. Man, oh man. This is looking to be. <laughs> when, god damn it. Sonic's game through and through. Yeah. The win probability is 100% for Dire, though. So I do expect Felt to grab this one. There was a glimmer of hope for the Radiant at minute, what's that? Minute 8, where they had 54%, but quickly lost it. And UGD <laughs> oh, getting man, spotted so out. So Bedlam is there. 6k lead for Sonics. They have the kind of lineup that can finish early. I mean, Quinn can take buildings pretty damn fast once you get an item on top of the BKB. I, and I Dawnbreaker is not going Desa though, looks like. This is the kind of game that could get decided without pushing the base. Like, if it felt feel like they're totally locked in. Oh, that's the Donald. Yeah, and that is another death onto Solji. Now starting to rack them up. Of course, Sonic's probably not too happy that he didn't die the entire game despite losing. Now just trying to get their money's worth, if you will. Lesla has his Blink Dagger. Orba Wait, they have two Orba Corrosions? They do. That's kind of odd. <laughs> yeah, that's and Lesla. Uh, I figured that Yawar would go for a Deso, but perhaps not having the best of games, so wants to play it safe with the early BKB. Yeah, I think I think it's stable to go BKB here. You also you don't have to deal massive amounts of damage as Dawn right now in the game anyway. You have both the Pango and especially the Lina that you can count on. All right, Quinn. Yep, they got snowball in. Doesn't matter. doesn't matter. They are so far ahead. It doesn't matter if they miss spells. Finn popped the BKB. That was the first usage. So down to eight seconds now. That's now available with the Blink Dagger and his ult. Try to initiate here if they really want. And I assume Roche is going to be on the plate here. Pretty soon for Sonics. They have the minus armor. They have Pango, who's really good. And of course, uh, the Lina. And Tactic. They have a lot, actually. A lot of little things. I wouldn't say any of them in particular are amazing at Rush by themselves, but together it's going to be pretty fast. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Tag Team, Orb of Corrosion, and Lucky Shot is. How much minus armor? And so Lucky Shot at level 4 is minus 8. And then you take the Orb of Corrosion, then it's minus 13. And then tag team for the 120 bonus physical damage per hit. It adds up very quickly. Would well, you looking for that 18 minute power run? He's gonna get it. 
It's a haste. It's a haste. He's forced to use it, maybe. He will. And yeah, we got the Bramble to start out. On the other side, it looks like they're going to find a pickup on the UGD. But the Swashbuckles here, Leslau looking to get his ult off, but going to cancel it. There's the buyback now from the Hoodwink. Leslau dodging the split earth. He's going to have to Swashbuckle to try to stay alive as Laguna Blade comes out. But the Hastern is too powerful from Solji. Curse Crown will find him, though. But here comes the Aphotic Shield and the Mistborn to follow. Quinn has to pop a BKB, but again, very little mana to speak of, but MSS is there with the punch, and that is gonna be enough. A oh, one for one. Shards. Shards onto two, blocking them out, but no follow-up. As you are. Still has a Starbreaker available, hammer and five. As Shu, no ult to work with. He's likely gonna get right click down. Ends up being a three for one with the buyback onto the hoodwink. And it's not over yet. Paradise finally gets off the eclipse. First of the game, I do believe. Quinn, he's going to tank it up. He could just right-click his way to this if he wants. Nice block off onto Yuar. Actually, they're on the same team. Not a great block off onto Yuar. As Fade. Going to take a little hammer damage, but the rest of Felt are going to limp away. Kind of an awkward fight. But yeah. I would say Phonic's still coming out on top. I actually think Quinn could have committed there and got the kill, but he was worried about trading himself away and just played it safe, which is fine. Um... No black hole used again. Have we even had one this game? It's 20 minutes in. I don't think so. I don't remember one. It's just been difficult for Fade. He also has so many things he needs to play around until he gets a BKB, right? To In order to get a guaranteed black hole. Literally every hero in the enemy team has a stun. Yeah. Bata, he takes the initiation, actually sidesteps the sharpshooter, but still dies. Laguna Blade, and a nice block up again on the Solji. MSS with the shards of his life this game. Ends up being a favorable trade for Sonics again. And now Shu. Looks like he's going to be next. And Fade looking for the opening with that black hole still available. But here comes the stun lock from Leslau. Down goes Paradise as the lead continues to grow for Sonic. Well, Fade is also in trouble here. Yeah, he's going to get caught off potentially. Could go for the black hole. He's going to do it. Hammer's going to do a little bit of damage. He finally drops. Not able to find a kill, though, for himself. He's very frustrated and wants to get off that ult. Not sure if they're going to find UGD. Looks like they might. Sharpshooter's there, but doesn't buy him enough time. Another great fight for Sonics. And I think looking at the build from Enigma, I think like this, it's not like Wraith Pact is abnormal, but I feel like that's an item you go for if you're having a good game. He was not having a good game. I feel I, like you just have to go blink BKB this game. I understand why he's taking that path, though, from a strategic angle with their lineup, right? Like, the way their lineup wants to play is to group up and fight as five. They're just getting outmaneuvered and just lost the lanes too hard. Mm -hmm. But Theoretically speaking, if things went according to plan, I think this would have been a good item this game, the race pack. He might get a kill on MSS here. Nope. Nope, MSS will live, oh, and boy. Quinn will get the kill on Fade instead. And now... We'll see if they end up just going to the old Roche pit. They're going to take the tier 2 tower first, the outpost to follow. And this is a shellacking. Yeah, no this is kind it. of desperation territory. When your Enigma goes in solo, they're hoping to kill a Tusk and absolutely will die, no matter whether he gets the kill or not. Then you know what the game state is. And this Roche will absolutely go to the Sonics. Could, um, wait for the Tusk if they wanted to, but it seems like they don't need to, so... Got it regardless. Lucky shot being very useful here. Aegis will likely go to Quinn. Yeah, I didn't make it, so. There we go. As he is inching closer to the Silver Edge. So he's going to be doing a lot of right click damage here relatively shortly. Basically, he's done with the Crystallis. His brain is so big. Die. Oh, as fade. Yeah, looks like another death for him. They get the stun lock with the Solar Guardian Rolling Thunder combo, and Sonic's just getting everything that they want. Yeah, I gotta say, this just looks too easy for them right now. As this is also a dead Luna. There's just no way to save him. Yep, he did. Shoot, tried his best. They're still on LSA. to get out himself. No, LSA. And 15k lead for Quincy Crew at 22 and a half minutes. Will they? Yawar has the BKB healing up a lot thanks to his luminosity. And now Solji's going to die instead. Caster curse from Cinder and as per norm. I said he Triple might kill die. for Quinn. <laughs> okay. right. well, that's not the that's same. Still counts. 
That counts. So yeah, and I, this is the kind of thing I imagined when I said this game might be over before the base push because I feel like from Felt's perspective, this game is just in a in a spot where every time they move outside the base, they just get killed everywhere. But they're still staying in. They're not GGing out here, but so it will it, it will come to a base push at this point. But the the last good thing that happened for this in the game feels quite a long time ago. And they will lose a lane of barracks and still keep playing the game, but. It is a TI purposes. Qualls. Wow. It is. I don't think I would. Uh... She was dead. Oh, oh the break. he got it off. He did activate it manually. He did. Quinn still has the Aegis for three minutes and the team backing him up as well. Oh, you don't. And Shu, the oh, crits. No. Oh my god. <laughs> Quinn is just unstoppable. Buyback though from Shu. Lesla looking to finish this game right now. UGD is dead. And it looks like the Lesh is next. Does have buyback available for himself, but Fade dies. Ultra kill for Quinn as the BKB is activated. So no black hole, no GG quite yet. As oh my uh, God. <laughs> Quinn. <laughs> You're not yeah, used to seeing Abaddon so squishy. Yeah, you can get double the double rampage. rampage. Why not? Soldier, that's oh, a dieback, but MSS steals the second rampage. He's beyond godlike Quinn. on Tusk. I just realized he's 13 kills in the four. Oh wow! <laughs> he's literally been getting every kill whenever they made a move. Uh, that's not yeah, true. He has 19 assists as well. But whenever Quinn hasn't been getting the kill, it's mainly been the Tusk. Man, I got my prediction so wrong in this game. Quinn 15 and 0. I think you got that one right. Yeah, I have him to the last player to be killed at least. So that's looking promising. Gracious me! Oh my. We were wrong about the daggers. There were three actually because MSS had such a good game. He got to buy his as well in time. So going to be wrong on basically every prediction as usual. So three That's daggers. Our style. And yeah, Leslau got the most last hits minute seven, which, you know. That was... We could have actually expected that because... I feel like that wasn't obvious that this was going to be the laning stage setup. Though, no, no, but we had time to see that, right? Oh. We just put our right. things in, our predictions in too early. Yeah. Got to wait till the last second. Uh, as, uh, Paradise, Paradise pops a BKB and then dies. Now the right clicks from Quinn. He has Aegis still for another minute and a half. Kind of wants to use it to get a little refresh here. Yep. What is he buying? Is he getting a Scotty? He has a point booster queued up. It's not a right. Yeah, it's a Scotty. As okay. Quinn and company looking to finish this one off in Gaben like shellacking. Fade gets off the early black hole, but Quinn only takes a little bit of the damage because of the respawn timer from the Aegis. Pops the BKB and now starting to delete the rest of Fade in turn. Full team wipe. GG's called. Sonics win 2-0. And this time they did it much faster. This was a 26 minute game before they forced out the GG. This is a bit more reminiscent of the BPC. I, w I just looked it up since we talked about it, right? You were like, Sonics were winning slow games. In the DPC, when these two teams met, Sonic won 23 minutes both games. Something like that. 22 to 23 minutes. And this felt a little bit more like what we have been seeing during that DPC. Just absolute, complete dominance. Both games, but this time a lot faster. Sonics, I also think they played better this game than the last one. I think last game may be a little bit, a little bit rough around the...